I just finished up making a beat with Arcade. I rate this plugin for its vast sample library, its intuitive and varied controls, and its ease of use. This plugin works really well if you're looking for some inspiration to start off, or even if you just need something extra to finish your production. The trick here is not to get so caught up in it that your compositions essentially become theirs. Pulling from many different sources is what makes productions great. And the one downfall of an all-encompassing library like this one is it can make you lazy and generic. With that being said though, there are many positive sides to this plugin, so let's jump in. So I recorded this clip earlier, um, also a lot more was part of another piece, but I took this because it's simple, there's not much to it, and today I'm going to do an arcade tutorial, the plugin by Output. And the thing about arcade is, let me stop this for a minute, the thing about arcade is you can get so carried away with it so easily because it makes every process incredibly simple. Uh, a lot of the hard work is done for you with a lot of the processes that you would normally be getting into for especially hip hop production or if you're making lo-fi tunes. I think what we might do today is more of like a an, an up-tempo lo-fi uh, kind of bop. But in order to make sure that I don't do all the work in Arcade, I started out with a little vocal track. And what that's going to ensure is that we're not completely dictated by some sample that we pull up in Arcade. We already have a kind of an idea of where we want this sound to go, and we're going to use Arcade to get there. Um, but on the converse, if you're completely stuck for ideas, it's pretty handy to pull up Arcade, find a sample you like, and put a beat to that sample. Whatever floats your boat. There's this preset chopped. And it's got some very cool piano samples. I'll get the MIDI. You get the idea. Now, I know that I've tuned the vocals to C major. C major. So, this preset is on C minor. What we want to do is come down here and find C major. And then the great thing you could do is lock it. So now when we're searching for other plugins, other presets rather, other sounds within this plugin, it's always going to be on C major. It saves a hell of a lot of time. Everything we do find, we can put it on half speed or double the speed. We can input quantize too, but you could do that in your DAW. Each of these keys you see I'm pressing now, it's all the black keys. They give you little functions, which I'll show off in a second. Got a bit of a vibe. Now we can adjust it. Saves you a lot of... One of my favorite things about having all of these here in the plugin is it just saves you a lot of time adding separate plugins to your insert strip. Like you can really adjust the sound you want from your VST in the VST here. Fucking love it. These are the functions and what we might do is 
record onto a separate audio track a few different versions of this so that when we're arranging later we have an intro or verse or chorus see me i'm pressing a sharp and it gives this effect One thing Arcade does do sometimes, maybe it's just my version of Pro Tools or my computer, it will cling on to one of the notes you press and you'll be editing somewhere down the line and it will be pray playing this one note over and over and over. And the only way to stop it is to go into the plugin, bypass it, or switch to a different setting and come back. Very annoying. So usually when I'm working with Arcade, not just for that reason, sometimes it's nice to see the waveforms, but I will bounce the MIDI into audio and use the audio to arrange. And then the beauty of it is, Arcade's free again. So we can pull that exact one up from that instrument track. And when we get our MIDI, record that down. And it just saves you putting plug-in after plug-in and using up more CPU. Plus, I think it's a pretty neat workflow. I really like this last one for an intro, so we'll start here, I think. Maybe out of beat at this stage. This is such such a wavy sound for the intro at least that the intro's gotta be four four. Like four on the floor. There's another reason that I am bouncing things like the kick track. Say for this intro for the kick track. We want like that summer vibe sweep with the EQ filter. So I'm adding it into the automation. So for now, we'll bring it into the next section anyway. But we are making this up as we go along, so God fucking knows. And we probably want a bit more groove on this still. So we're going to pull up our friend from the last episode, which I believe is in pitch shift for some weird fucking reason. We have M Rhythmizer.
Now, usually what I would do just for mixing sake, when you're at your mixing stage to make it easier, I would bounce out each of these tracks onto their own separate place and mix them there. But for we're making a beat, so for ease of time, for ease of time, it's not right. To make things quicker, I'm going to mix it here. Uh, let's get some hi-hats. Because this is essentially the groove of your song if you're making hip-hop trap these days is your hi-hats. That's what makes the bulk of the groove and you want that to be fucking banging. thing we're using some samples there's a double hit on that snare which makes the timing off with a lot of things i'm gonna try but that works Remembering that it is in fact an arcade tutorial. This is probably where we would turn to arcade because this is probably going to be the hook and this needs something to make it the hook. Point out how great it is that you can just type in summer and you get a bunch of sample packs that sound like summer. It doesn't even have to be a specific instrument, just type in summer. Love that. <laughs> Another great thing Arcade has to offer is, why did I put it away? These atmospheres. In terms of sound design, you just, it would take ages to make these things. And there are ways we might actually do something like that where we make some of our own. But it's just another one of these things that Arcade just makes so simple because it's all there and ready for you. So I'm going to put some of these in the hook because it adds to that summary feel we're going for. It's a popular question in YouTube, Google searches, how to glide in doing your 808s in Pro Tools. So Pro Tools are sampler is structure free. You open up structure free, put in your 808, do out your pattern. What you want to do is select mono 
and legato and then you can adjust your glide rate Thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought. Give me some feedback. I want to make these videos as enjoyable and informative as possible for you. Catch you next time.